some of my musical influences. The first one, I'm gonna just keep it real, man, would be Pimp C. You know, I know everybody love Pac and Biggie. We all like Pac and Biggie, but just somebody who influenced me was Pimp C, UGK, and Bun B. But Pimp C was the first because he was a producer, he was a writer, he was a rapper. And then most importantly, when you met him, he was that same person that you heard on the track. You dig what I mean? Like, I met Pimp C out there and I like, pissed on myself because I thought he was gonna be like some old arrogant rapper, but he was a country like me. So Pimp C was like number one. Living in uh, Texas, you kind of we kind of just love the Houston artists because Houston artists kind of gave us the blueprint down there, like the Ghetto Boys, Switch the House was big. But it was another group called SUC Screwed Up Click that was like the shit to me, like Lil Flip, ESG, Fat Pat, Big Mo, it's so many Lil Kiki, so many of them that was like influential. A lot of them ain't here no more, but just as a kid, you would listen to these tapes and CDs, and they would be rapping about stuff that you could see in your neighborhood or stuff that you can imagine because you know somebody else still live there. So shout out to the Houston culture. Then Dallas, we had a group called DSR, Tum Tum, Big Tuck. Those are the people that I knew personally, and it made me feel like if they could do it, I could do it too. So I mean, shout out to them. Oh yeah, and I got a uh, Cash Money No Limit. Hell yeah, I forgot about that. I remember when I first got the Jewel now, 400 degrees CD. 400 degrees changed my life, man. So shout out to Juvie. If Juvie watching this, tell him, man, I still jam. I got it on my on my iPod right now, man. I remember when I first uh, went to Louisiana. It was like 96, I think, 96 or 97. My cousins, you know, they were listening to No Limit. I had never heard it before. So we listened to the True Album, we listened to True Album, and I went back again, and they popped this tape in. We watching it, and I'm looking like, damn, what is this? You know, I'm about it. So we watching the movie go off. And at the end, you know, you like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, it ain't over yet. Master P had the strippers, you know what I mean? At the, on the very last scene, you know, them girls acting a fool with the ice cream. Just think, I'm a young nigga seeing this, man. That changed my life. And what also showed me that you could be from the South, you could be a, you could be a millionaire, you could be an entrepreneur, movies, clothes, TV, everything. I got to shout out to P. Miller, because he, really no, he don't really get no credit, man, but shout out to P. Master P, man. I got a chance to rock with D.O.C. last year when I got back from L.A. D.O.C. actually had a uh, welcome home party. Erica Badu was there, like just all the old school rappers like from the West Coast, some from Dallas was there, and he actually called my management and was like, y'all want Fat Pimp to be a part of this show? And for me, I'm thinking like, how the hell he even know who I am? So I got invited, so we set the show up, then I get listen to the radio, and he's telling people like, yeah, my favorite song by Fat Pimp was Rolling Off of X, and this, and that, and he was like, I'm like, how do you even know my shit, man? So. That was a touching experience. I never got a chance to work with him yet, but just for that opportunity to be in the same place as him and knowing what him and NWA did for hip hop, man, that's a, that's a hell of a feeling to know he's from Dallas too. So shout out to DLC. So I didn't know that you was supposed to get half the money up front and then get the other half at the end. But we drove all the way to the show and then the promoter never picked up the phone. So I was just asked out and never did a show and I didn't get no money and I was on E. You know, they're, they're thinking intelligent people, you know. And if I just come out and be like, hey, you know, I'm gonna go out on the streets of the Bronx and find me some marijuana, I'd have to sit there for 30 minutes and explain to them and they'd go back and forth. Is this a smart decision? You should think about this. I didn't really have time for that. I was trying to smoke. For me, like, I critique myself a lot and I probably need to stop, man. But I had a good time recording Bella and Never because there wasn't no, wasn't no issues. And with, with me and my whole, that was fun. Like, I ain't gonna even lie. Me and my whole were fun. The Valentine Project. The conversation has got has to come from like us. We have to speak to our own people more and more. We need more more um, opportunities for them. You know, we need to kind of just let them see that is is another way.